know that as directors, we have a very serious duty, but the question of to whom that duty is owed is often one that's quite contentious to answer. Whilst many people believe in the theory of shareholder primacy, that directors are appointed by and therefore are accountable to shareholders and must owe their duty to shareholders, is not always the case. There are actually quite few jurisdictions around the world where shareholder primacy is enshrined in legislation, even if there are rather more where directors act as if the shareholders were the people to whom they owed their duty of care, diligence, etc. Um, we also have the nature of organisation primacy. This is the more common legal framework and under this framework, directors owe their duties to the company itself, which requires them to think about the interests and needs of the company rather than those of shareholders. It solves a lot of the problems about these shareholders, the original shareholders. What about the next lot of shareholders who might be buying in at the next capital raising? So a lot of those issues go away when you have organisation primacy and then a new one that we are hearing more and more about is this whole concept of stakeholder primacy. And this is where people say that directors owe their duty to a much wider range of stakeholders, not just the organisation and its health and interests, but the societies in which it operates, the environment in which it is found, um, and a wider range of people and um, indeed non-people. So quite a complex area. From my perspective, actually taking the organisation primacy model allows you to incorporate the wants and needs of other stakeholders and consider those through the ethical lens of what should this company do. And I find that is often helpful. I hope it helps you too.